In this video, we're going to go over standard cost utilizing automated inventory evaluation. So let's go into inventory here, go to configurations, product categories, and we're going to be focused on the standard price product category, which is set up as standard cost inventory valuation set is automated. We have all of our account stock properties here. And under our account properties, we have a income account, which is going to be our product sales, our expense account, which is cost of goods sold. And we set up this price difference account. Now this doesn't come default out of the box. So we created a net price difference account, which is an expense account. This can be either an expense account or an income account. And this is going to record all of this price difference between what we say the standard cost is for this product versus what we actually purchase this product for. So just as a recap, in standard price, whatever we set on the product itself, so standard price here, whatever we set, say $20 for product one, is going to be the value that the system uses when it's going to value your inventory for any items for product one. So regardless if we purchase it for 20 or 18 or $50, the system is going to say that this costs $20. And therefore we need that price difference account to capture any difference in that price. So let's go through a few examples. Right now we have some inventory in, on hand and if we go to our valuation for standard price, we see that the total value here is $60. There's currently five transactions. We can ignore them for now. We're gonna go through some examples. So the first thing I'm gonna do is purchase this product. I'm gonna go to new here. I'm gonna select vendor one. We'll add our standard price product. We'll just purchase, or rather, yeah, so we have a 20 here, but our vendor one says 30. We're just gonna update this to 20. We'll go back and we'll just update this to 20 as well. So for this example, I wanna purchase it at the price that we have for standard price. Now the first thing that happens, I'm gonna confirm this order. When we receive these goods in from our vendor, a journal entry is going to get created. So let's take a look. So we'll receive these products in, we'll validate to receive them, and we'll see under valuation that a new valuation line was created inside of our valuation report. And that was to add $20 worth of value to all of our standard price product one. And if I click on this little book here, it's gonna bring me to the journal entry that was created automatically. So as I mentioned in our previous videos, we're going to credit our stock interim received account and we're going to debit our stock valuation account. So we haven't paid this bill yet. The items came into our inventory and in automated inventory valuation, our balance sheet reflects our stock moves in real time. Therefore, our stock valuation was debited to increase that asset account but we need to hold that offsetting balance, which is going to go in our stock interim received account, which is credited here. Then when we create a bill, our stock interim received account will instead be debited, which will essentially zero out that stock interim received account, following some, uh, in addition to some other journal items that get created, which we'll take a look at in a second. So now I'm gonna use my breadcrumbs here to go back to our PO, and I'm gonna create a bill. So I create a bill, I'm gonna set our bill date, and I'm simply going to confirm this and we'll look at the journal items. Under our journal items here, you'll see that our stock interim received account is now debited, which is going to zero out that stock interim received account, and our accounts payable account is going to be credited because we owe our vendor $20 for this item that we just purchased. Now we can see what that looks like on our balance sheet as well. So we'll go into our accounting module, go to reports balance sheet. And under our current assets, we're gonna see our stock valuation increased. And let's adjust this. Okay, there we go. Based on the date here, we still had some value in our stock interim received account. That should have been zeroed out, which it is now when I change the date. So we have stock interim received, zero dollars, and our stock valuation automated has increased to $230 uh, with some other value from some of our other, other products in there. So now let's take a look at our next example. Let's go back into purchasing. 
I'm just going to duplicate our previous bill, but I'm going to change this to $25. So now that I am changing the price to $25, this does not affect the cost on the product template that we looked at. It's still going to remain at $20, and that's because we're using standard costs. But this difference in value, this $5 needs to go somewhere. And where that's going to go is in that price difference account that we created. So let's confirm our order. We'll receive our products in and we'll validate this. Now the first thing I'm going to do is actually go into our, let's go back to our receipt. We'll look at the valuation that got created and we'll look at this journal entry. And we'll see the journal entry increased our stock valuation by $20. So it should be $250 right now. And our stock interim received account has a, a balance of negative 20 or a credit of $20. Now in our PO, uh, let's go back and let's go into our accounting and look at our balance sheet before we do anything with that purchase order. And here we see our stock in term received at that negative 20 balance and our stock valuation at $250 for our stock valuation automated account as we suspected. And now we're gonna go back to that purchase order and we're gonna create a bill. So now this time, let me set my bill date and I'm gonna set my accounting date to the 13th here and I'll confirm. And under my journal items, we have some extra journal items that were created. So we have our stock interim received as we suspected and that's debiting the stock interim received for the full amount that we paid. So now, um, you know, just off of this, we would have a negative balance or a positive balance of $5 inside of our stock interim received. So we need to offset that, which we do with this credit down below. And then the net price difference account gets debited for $5 to increase our net price difference. And then of course the total balance of $25 is recorded in our accounts payable account. So now if we go into our balance sheet, we'll see that the valuation for automated is 250. Our stock interim received account is zeroed out as we expected. And then if we go to our profit and loss statement, we'll see our net price difference account with a balance here with a couple of other items that we purchased previously. But we see our, if we look at our general ledger here, we can see the $5 value just get added from PO number seven, which we just completed. All right. Now the last thing I wanna mention is that if we go into inventory and we go to the product itself, and we go to this automated standard price. If we adjusted this at any time, let's say we adjusted this to $21. What's going to happen is a journal entry is automatically going to be created for us. And if we go into our reports and we look at our valuation under standard price here, we'll see that this journal entry was just created to add a total of $5 value across the five units that we have in stock. So $1 per unit. And that's because we updated it from 20 uh, to $21. And I can view this journal entry. And what you'll notice is that the label has a clear description. That balance gets added to our cost of goods sold. This is the default account that gets hit when we make those adjustments. And our stock valuation was debited to increase uh, our valuation. Now, the same thing is going to be true if we do it the opposite. So if we decrease the value, then <clears throat> we'll have the same thing, but it will be credited for our stock valuation automated and debited for our cost of goods sold. Now, let's go into our journal items and we can search that at our screen. And one thing that I wanna mention is that in manufacturing accounting or inventory accounting in general, you may want to do some variance analysis to see what you thought the product should cost versus what you actually uh, purchased it for. And you can easily do that by looking at your journal entries and we can group this by product. And we can then look at our standard price here. And then we can look at all of the values that got hit for our net price difference account. So here we see our net price difference account. So if we wanted to, we can search here by net price difference and we'll look for the account net price. And then we'll see all of the variations in value, whether they were debits or credits for our net price difference account so that we can use this information if we want to update our standard costs or standard price in our products 
uh, for anything that has a standard price. So that's everything you need to know about standard price using automated inventory valuation.